Ladies and gentlemen, this Red Gaming Citadel video, let us discuss the Shadowfall resolution issue that, of course, has been going around the internet for a while now. So, I've also done this an article which is going to become pretty apparent why while I'm going through this video. Now, if I do sound a little bit stuffy, it's because I'm pretty much fighting off a sore throat as well, which is not too ideal. So, anyway, let's go through a little bit of backstory first. Killzone Shadow Fall, before it was even released on the console, before the PS4 was even dropped, Grilla released several PDFs, which of course showed the lighting for the game, it showed the rendering process, it showed what they were trying to accomplish, the art direction, and even we got information on the PS4. For example, we saw how many CPU cores were available for games, which were six, by the way, and so on. And we knew that uh, based on their own statements that the target for the game, the native resolution for the single player, was going to be 1080p 30fps. But anyway, it recently came to light that, technically speaking, on the multiplayer side of the game, it's actually running at 960 by 1080 p Many people have st started to accuse Gorilla Games of lying. And yelling uh, very loudly on the internet as people tend to do and this is a really tricky situation because and we're going to be going through all of it in this video um but here's the thing it's like studios at this rate are probably going to have to really explain and use very careful verbiage when they're dealing with things such as resolution frame rates and so on because people are becoming that much more uh, in tune with this stuff so, back in November of last year, of course, uh, November the 4th, uh, Mikhail V.D. Ludwig from Gorilla, uh, I've got this in an article, by the way, and I've linked that article from this article, so you can read that article while you write while your article. Um, he spoke about what was known as TSSAA, so that's Temporal Super Sample Anti-Aliasing. And he said, and I quote, that we use FXAA, TMAA, and we dig deeper into future publication, but they complement each other. So, this was actually known about. He said this publicly. He stated it black and white. I've got an image, by the way, of um, the tweet, and I've got the link to it, so you can check that out in the article. And the basic premise here is that... It was to improve FXAA, which is, of course, a post-process anti-aliasing technique. We'll get more to the, the nitty-gritty of the uh, temporal reproduction. I'm sorry, reprojection. Uh, that's getting the sore throat vibe, that's always helpful. Um, anyway, we'll get to that in a moment, which, of course, is slightly different to this. But hang on, guys. So anyway, um, this was used to improve... Uh, anti-aliasing so we already knew about this type of technique now what this basically does is it takes the previous image the previous frame and uses that as a reference point and then it basically takes the next frame that the, the now current frame uses the previous frame on top of the next frame the current frame and combines them for a rather silky smooth anti-aliasing uh, fun. Now, before we move on to what exactly this is, um, what exactly temporal reprojection is, let's first of all understand what resolution scaling is. I'm sure many of you understand this anyway, but for the two or three of you that don't, you know, I'm not being... Uh, offensive here, but let's just try to get everyone onto the same page. What is resolution scaling? Well, it's pretty simple actually. It basically means you're stretching the pixels in the X and Y dimension. In other words, you're basically making them wider and taller than what they originally were intended to be. So, a great example of this, let's assume that your game natively runs 720p. Well, 
what would happen here is that the image would effectively be stretched to 1080. It's scaled. It's scaled to that dimension using either the console scaler or the TV scaler or the GPU scaler, depending on if it's a console that's running it, depending on, for example, if it's a movie, like a 720p movie, your TV would likely do the trick. Or if it's the PC, then your GPU will scale it for you. Unless, of course, you decide to go for one-for-one -one mapping. Now, if you're doing one-to-one -one, one -one mapping, and let's say that you've got a 1080p screen, in which case you're going to have a border around the image because quite simply put you're telling the gpu only render to these pixels here don't go outside otherwise what basically starts happening is it stretches the images and it's basically it can't really make up detail now if you want a great example of this you can take an image to paint just grab any old image off the internet preferably a, a like a lower resolution one and try say doubling its size or even take a photo and double its size and you can see what happens if you zoom into 100 percent the details are a bit blurrier and this simple reason is because it's guessing now you could choose different methods to um guess and certainly the scalers on consoles are pretty good at it but Suffice to say, it's not a native image, and therefore you are going to be losing some quality. Now, it's very important first now to understand what a frame of animation is. I'm sure most of you understand this concept, but I have captured a couple of images from Ye Old Thief on the PlayStation 4, and they are literally. Fra I'm sorry, guys, just caught the mic there. Bad, Paul, bad. I always do that, it's really irritating. But anyway, I've captured a little bit of video um, from Thief, and it happens to be from my graphics comparison, incidentally. And they're literally frame A and frame B. So in other words, frame A literally precedes frame B. So they are sequentially it goes frame A, and then the very next frame is the one you'll see here. I've, I've labeled them rather lovingly frame 1 and frame 2. Now you'll see from those images, um, there's very little difference between them. Now, the reason we get smooth gameplay is because, quite simply put, you will see multiple frames per second, and that's what we get, right? So, let's assume, in this case, with Thief, it's target frame rate, even though it doesn't run at that, and I will get around to the frame rate analysis at some point in the next few centuries, I promise. But its target frame rate is around 30 frames per second. So, in theory you will get 30 of those frames every single second um, as you play the game, right? Pretty simple. And so, in other words, there's very little difference between frame 1, in this case, and frame 2. Because, let's face it, you're not going to have a character magically move from one side of the screen to the other. Now, of course, there are certainly some examples where there could be some large differences between one frame and the other. For example, you might have a light that suddenly turns off, or you could have, for example, a large ass explosion. Or, for example, you could turn at the same time as a carrot to move very fast, and dozens of other different things. But generally speaking, from one frame of animation to another, there isn't going to be a huge difference. So, Guerrilla Games gave a little bit of information exactly what they did. Um, this is from the official blog. I'm just going to uh, read it out to you guys in complete and utter verbatim because I'm shameless like that. They said, and I quote, So in a little bit more detail, here's what we did for this technique. We keep track of three images. A history pixels, size 960 by 1080. The current frame, the past frame, and the past past frame. Right? <coughs> For each pixel, we store its color and motion vector. So, in other words, the direction of the pixels that are physically on screen. We also stored a full 1080p previous frame, which we used to improve the anti-aliasing. By the way, that would be the temporal super anti-aliasing that we mentioned above. Then, they have to reconstruct every odd pixel in the frame. They track 
the pixel back to the previous frame and two frames ago by using its motion vectors. So what they're basically doing here is they're basically seeing and predicting, okay, what has happened to this frame and what happened to the previous frame and so on and so forth. Because let's, let's just be honest. Um, if for the past two frames... A pixel is is heading, let's just say 90 degrees to the right. Let's just make this really easy. Let's just say it's heading 90 degrees. You can pretty much bet that the next pixel, or the next frame, shall I say, it's going to be doing pretty much exactly the same thing. So in other words, they're utilizing this as its predictability. They say that most pi pixels are very predictable. So we use reconstruction for the past frame to serve as the odd pixel. And if they determine that a pixel isn't predictable, they'll then pick the best values. In other words, they'll do some guesswork from the neighbors. So, according to them, when it works and it guesses correctly, you'll basically be pretty hard to find the difference between it and a regular native, I'm using big old air quotations here, 1080p image. If it goes wrong, you're going to have a small vertical white line because the two images don't quite match up. There's that little bit of uh, disjointed behavior there. Now, it's important to know that this technique has been around for a while. I've got some uh, references here that you can read if you wish. I'm certainly going through more myself. Um, some of them are pretty lengthy, if I'm honest, but still. It's not a new technique, right? Um, it's been around for a while, for example, with shadow maps. as links in there to explain what shadow maps are, because this video is already becoming pretty lengthy, and my voice is starting to give out, if I'm totally honest. But suffice to say, um, I personally believe my own personal opinions on this. First of all, let's just be honest. Consoles, and by consoles I mean both the Xbox One, the PlayStation 4, any console, doesn't matter, has limited finite GPU power. Now the reason that they've done this isn't because they want to be sneaky, it's just because they're trying to best utilize the performance of the system. Now, the real reason they did this is to reduce latency of frame rate, they wanted to improve controller responsiveness, and so on. Now here's the thing, I actually think that a lot of games are going to start utilising this type of technique. I think that, you know, we're already getting a lot of games that are using deferred rendering, for example. And we know that the MRT of Killzone, that's multiple render targets by the way, was about 800 megabytes if you look at the PDFs and the documentation, it's about 800 megabytes, which is, quite frankly, ridiculously large. Do I feel that Gorilla were being disingenuous? Do I feel that they were lying? Do I feel that they were being dishonest? Nefarious? No. I feel that, to be honest, they've actually been pretty open with this. Um, more open than most companies, if I'm totally honest. Bottom line, I think this is a better technique than rendering at 900p or below. I'd much rather this than, say, 720p. Some people may disagree. And I'm not really going to get drawn into the argument of, you know, is this native or whatever, because it really depends heavily on your perspective and your definition of native. In my opinion, yes, it is, but... It could also be argued that it's not, but I don't think they did this for marketing for the PlayStation 4 or whatever. I honestly feel that this is for the purpose of playability, and here's the thing. I think for the most part, studios are going to do this. I mean, look at Rise, Son of Rome. Do you remember the bashing that they took when they lowered the resolution? I'm giving you a second so you can remember that, yeah. Remember all of the bashing that the studio took and the whining on forums. And I don't mean that in a harsh way. I'm just, you know, saying there was a lot of animosity. The bottom line is, however, I even 
took two uh, images. One, the original, which was like 1080p or whatever it was, and another at 900p. But they added a lot more effects, better textures, better lighting, blah, 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 it looked pretty. Bottom line, if you look at the two versions of the game, there's absolutely no way in hell, if you're objective, at least in my opinion, you can't say that the 1080p version looked better. Now, immediately people are going to say, well, what about the Xbox One in this? Here's the thing. This is where it gets really tricky. Um, and without wishing to draw this into a resolution gate type of issue, I think you can only count a game's resolution based on that game. So in other words, you can't base what Killzone Shadow Fall does compared to COD or Battlefield or whatever because all of their engines, their rendering, everything is totally and completely different. So I think that with consoles, if you're getting one console that's running at say 1080p and another console that's running at say 720p, then yes, you could start asking questions. But then you've still got other questions that you have to ask, like, you know, what type of optimizations were done on both consoles? What issues are there? You know, are they using the same rendering techniques? And so on and so forth. Here's the thing, guys. There's going to be a lot more of this coming up in the next few days. I've got some huge documentation to read through, and I'm going to be doing quite a bit of reading over the next couple of days. Uh, Griller themselves have said that they're going to be speaking heavily about this on the 20th, I think, of March. Um, I think that was the date, anyway. Uh, and, of course, I'll be apprising you guys of that as well. But I wanted to put this out here as kind of like my intermediary findings, if you will, my initial findings. Anyway, as much as I'd like to talk about this considerably more, if I do, my voice is going to be absolutely just completely trashed. So, unfortunately, I'm going to have to get going. Hopefully you found the video somewhat informative. Anyway, I'll see you soon. Take care. Bye for now.